Hi guys, my name is Vikram Tucker. Welcome to this video on ETL. In the previous videos, I have given an overview about data warehousing and its architecture. In this video, we are going to talk about one of the most important aspects of data warehousing, which is ETL. So let's get started. ETL stands for Extract, Transform and Load. As we mentioned in the previous videos that data is read from the heterogeneous sources, from the source systems and loaded into staging table. And then finally, after the transformations are complete, it is loaded into a data warehouse. So the complete process of extracting the data, transforming the data and loading the data into warehouse is called extract, transform and load. It is not a one-off process for a data warehousing because data in the operational systems and the source systems keeps on changing. So this is a regular process with the data has been regularly fetched from the source system and loaded into a warehouse after transformations are complete. So this is important aspect of the warehousing because if the source data from the operational systems and the source system is not extracted, cleansed and integrated into a proper format in, in the warehouse, then it will be difficult to perform the query processing efficiently, which is the ultimate purpose of the data warehousing. So ETL has three phases. First is the extraction part. Second is the transformation. And third is the loading of the extracted and the transformed data into the warehouse. So let's look into each of these three stages in detail. So first is the data extraction. So as we earlier mentioned, the data from the various sources uh, has been extracted into the staging area as a first step in the data warehousing. So there are a couple of data extraction strategy. First is the full extraction, wherein all the data from the operational systems and all the source systems gets extracted into the staging area. So this generally happens uh, in two scenarios. One in for the initial load when the data warehouse is getting populated first time or in the scenarios where we do not have any strategy for identifying the changed record. So we extract the full data and do all the transformation and identify all the changed or the modified records on the staging area. So in this strategy, we extract all the data from the source systems into our staging server. Next is the partial extraction with update notification. So sometimes we get the notification from the source systems uh, that which data has been updated, which data has been deleted and which data is the new data. So this is also called the delta and in this strategy, we only extract the data which has been modified uh, and it is easy and quick as compared to the full extraction. And the next strategy is the partial extraction without update indication. So in this strategy, we do not extract the full data set from the source system. We extract the data based on certain keys or certain strategies for example, we have populated data or we have extract already extracted data till yesterday. So we extract today's data and then we uh, identify all the updates on that data. Uh, one thing we need to remember while extracting the data from source system is that it should be designed in a way that it does not negatively affect the source system performance because source system is generally where all the actual business and the transaction happens. So we should design our system or schedule our system to run at that time that it should not negatively affect the source system performance. So let's move on to the next phase, which is the transformation phase. So the data extracted into the staging server from the source system is in a raw format and we cannot use the data as it is. It has to be cleansed mapped as per the requirement and transformed before it is finally ready for loading into a data warehouse. So this stage, all the transformations, all the cleansing and all the mappings happen. 
So let's look at the basic transformation tasks. First is the selection, wherein we select the data which is required to be loaded into a data warehouse or which is actually meant to be transformed. So in this step, we select those data. Next step is the matching. In this step, we look up the data from various lookup files and then match the data that uh, needs to be uh, transformed. Next part is data cleansing and enrichment. So data is not cleansed in our source systems. It is not standardized uh, because we are fetching the data from more than one source system. So it has to be standardized or normalized. Hence, we do the data cleansing and enrichment. And the last is consolidation and summarization. As we mentioned earlier, we consolidate and aggregate the data from the source system because we do not want to load same data from the source system into a warehouse. Hence, we consolidate, summarize and aggregate the data from the source system in the transformation phase. So let's look at the, some of the sample transformations that we apply on a data. First is the standardizing data. As I mentioned earlier, data has been fetched from various sources uh, and then it needs to be standardized before loading into a warehouse. Character set conversion and encoding handling. We also need to convert the data into a defined encoding in the data warehouse because the source system may or may not have the same encoding. We calculate and derive new columns from the existing columns. We split and merge fields, split it from a single field to multiple fields and then we combine some fields as well and this all happens based on the requirements. We convert units because source system may have a different way of storing it, a particular measurement but we, we convert into a standard format for example we convert the date time we convert the units of measurements into a standard format to summarization aggregation of data and consolidation deduplication is also done as a part of transformation in which we delete the duplicate data that we receive from multiple sources and then finally we do the key restructuring key restructuring is important because we do not use the same keys that we use in our operational system in our data warehouse in data warehouse has a concept of surrogate keys surrogate key are the non meaningful keys and uh, it, sh it, it should it should be generated irrespective of the keys or the primary keys defined in the source systems so we design our data warehouse so that we populate the surrogate keys using the data from the source systems so next is loading the data into the warehouse from the staging server we fetches the prepared data in the transformation phase and load into a data warehouse now there are types of loading strategies we use first is the initial load as I mentioned when we load the data for the very first time we do not care about identifying the newly or the modified records we generally take the whole data set from the staging server and load it into a data warehouse so this is a one of process and it is generally done when the data is going to be populated with on the, for the very first time in the data warehouse next is the incremental load so this is when uh, we apply all the ongoing changes from the source system into the data warehouse periodically so in this we only load the records which is which has either changed or the newly uh, inserted records into source systems and the last is the full refresh we sometimes require to do a full refresh uh, as well which is basically completely erasing the contents of one or more tables and loading the fresh data for certain tables we do not want to keep the history of changes so it is better if we completely erase those tables and load all the data which is extracted from the source systems so this completes about the loading strategies so next is the ETL tools we have a couple of ETL tools uh, there are enterprise softwares which are Informatica, IBM Data Stage, Microsoft 
इंटीग्रेशन सर्विसेज एबिनेशो एंड टैलेंट एंड क्लोवर ए टी एल दीज आर फुल फ्लैज एंटरप्राइज सॉफ्टवेयर वी हैव कपल ऑफ ओपन सोर्स एंड कम्युनिटी सॉफ्टवेयर एज वेल विच इज पिंटाहो कैटल एंड टैलेंट क्लोवर ऑल्सो हैज ए ओपन सोर्स वर्जन बट इट इज वेरी लिमिटेड टू सर्टन ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ओनली Now let's look at what are the features and capabilities of ETL tools. The data connectivity with the source and the target system. The ETL tool should allow to connect to the source system and the target data systems efficiently and seamlessly. Next is scalability and performance. Now we should not be able to change a job in order to perform it better whenever our data has been increased whenever Uh, we have a business do some acquisition so we should scale the etl jobs by adding more clusters etl tool should have lot of pre built transformation connectors which allows us to do the transformation easily and quickly etl tool should also have a data profiling and data cleaning components which allows to standardize and clean the data because the data from the source system may or may not be clean or may or may not be in the same format so data profiling and data cleansing allow us to make the data standardized and improve the data quality etl tool should also have a capabilities to easily perform logging and exception handling it should have a robust administration features which allow us to schedule the jobs which allow us to assign the jobs to particular users and which allows multiple developers to work simultaneously on the same project it should have connectors to easily integrate with web services etl2 should allow and give the capability to perform the operations in batch as well as the real time so this completes our overview of the etl i hope you guys have liked this video If yes don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos